Welcome back. This is our second tutorial and we'll be working with the extrude command today. Just like before, we'll start by creating a document and we'll name this document extrude. And then following the same process, we're going to create a sketch. You can't extrude anything until you have a sketch that you want to make three dimensional. You'll click sketch. Again, I like to choose the front view and draw my sketches there because your front view is going to generally be your largest and most descriptive, meaning you can create the most amount of the object in the least amount of steps. Um, in Onshape, it doesn't automatically pivot so that you're looking at the front view from a 90 degree perspective. So I'm going to click on the front view of my navigation cube. So I'm looking at it straight on. I'm now going to draw a rectangle with dimensions three by two. You can draw it using a line command, make your box and then add dimensions to it. Or to save you some time, you can click the rectangle command. G is going to be your shortcut. You will left click and release, and drag it out, left click and release, and then it will prompt you to put in your dimensions. So I'm going to type three, enter, two, enter, and then those dimensions have been placed in the correct locations. Once you finish your sketch, you'll click the green check mark. That will exit our sketch and then bring us back to where our three dimensional commands are. Onshape isn't going to automatically change your view to something like this, like it will in other three dimensional CAD projects. Um, so you'll have to manually do that. I right click and drag on my mouse, or you can click on the corners of your navigation cube to see it from a three dimensional perspective. I like to look at it from this view so I can see where my extrusions are going. So I'm going to now click the extrude command here. And you want to make sure that your shape is gray so that whenever you select it, it will extrude the whole shape. If your sketch isn't gray, it means it's not enclosed and you did not complete the sketch. Therefore, it will not extrude it. Automatically, it's going to populate the depth to be one. And we want it to be 1.35. So you'll come in here and change it to 1.35 and then click the green check mark. And now you've created your first shape. To continue, we're going to create another sketch. Again, I'm going to put it on the front view, change it with my navigation cube, and then I'm going to press the scroll on my mouse to pan and give myself some more room to work with. Um, for this one, I'm going to use my line command there is not a triangle command um, under the polygon to make it easier for you, so you will have to draw it out using your lines. So I'm going to roughly sketch out my right triangle like this, not using any specific dimensions yet. I'm now going to go back in and add those dimensions. I've clicked on dimension, left click release, drag it out, and left click again. It now gives me my dialog box where I can change my value. So I want the height to be one. And then we're going to repeat the process for the bottom line and we want it to be 1.2 like that. I'm then going to finish my sketch. So click the green check just like before. I'm going to rotate around so I can see where my stuff is. Click extrude and then click the shape. You'll see it's automatically going in this direction, which isn't super important right now, but you can change the direction if you want to. So you can click this little arrow to make it go in the other direction and you want your distance to be 0.5. Automatically it'll put one there, so make sure you're paying attention and changing your dimensions where necessary, and then click your green check. And you'll see that these two are going in different directions, I created them on the same plane, but they're going in opposite directions.
in order to make this tapered like on the tutorial I didn't do that the first time so you can always go back in and edit so if I wanted to edit edit my rectangle I can double click here and my dialog box will pop back up my instructions did say that we wanted this to be tapered so you're going to double click on extrude 2 and then you want to click this button labeled draft you won't see a taper feature in on shape so instead we're going to click this draft button and then you'll see the degrees that pop up you want it to be tapered at 10 degrees so we're going to change that to 10 and you'll see that it starts to taper it outward or push it outward slightly um, and you can change the direction like that so it tapers in by switching this arrow but our tutorial wants it to go out like that so I'll click my green check you could do that all at once um, but I also just want to show you how to go back and edit something we're now going to create another sketch I'm going to put it on the same front work plane again and then choose the front view I want to create a rectangle that's 1.25 by 0.75 inches with a depth of 0.5 so I'm going to start with a rectangle left click release left click release we want it to be 1.25 long 0.75 tall finish that sketch come back to our isometric view and extrude this shape direction isn't super important at the moment so you can make it go whichever way you want it to go but the depth does have to be 0.5 just like that now a little bit different we're going to start another sketch but you're going to place it on the top of this box or the front of this box right here so we're going to click there and you'll see that you have now have a new plane that you can draw on I'm going to rotate again so that I'm looking straight at it like this and then we're going to draw a triangle on the surface of this shape so I'm going to roughly sketch out my triangle like this right click and escape my line command couple things you may want to add would be a horizontal constraint to here and then equal constraints all the way around so you do want it to be an equilateral triangle like this and then we will put some dimensions in there to size it and locate it we want the base of our triangle to have a width of 0.5 and since you put in the equal constraints, it should adjust the other two sides accordingly. From the left edge to the top point of your triangle, you want that distance to be 0.5, like that. And then from the base of your tri of your rectangle to the base of your triangle, you want that dimension to be 0.2, like that. So then finish your sketch and this is where it's super important to get to that isometric view so you can see exactly where this triangle is going we're going to cut the triangle out so we're going to click extrude you're going to choose the triangle shape and then as you can see if we're under the add option it's going to add on a triangle outward if you choose remove it's going to cut that triangle out of the rectangle so for this one we want to remove that triangle and you want it to go all the way through the distance of it isn't super important but we know the distance of our the depth of our rectangle is 0.5 so as long as this is 0.5 or more you can also drag this little arrow as long as it goes through the other side it will cut it all the way through so click your green check mark now we're going to repeat the same process to add 
a triangle onto the box. So looking back, the dimensions of our box were 1.25 by 0.75. So we'll start with a sketch again. I'm going to put it on this front view again and choose my front view so that I can see where I'm drawing. A rectangle again, left click release, left click release, and now put those values in. So 1.25, enter, 5.75, enter. We'll finish that sketch by clicking the green check mark, change it to an isometric view so I can see where I'm going, and then extrude, select the rectangle, and then just for fun, we'll keep this one going towards us and this one going away from us just so they go in two different directions. No reason other than just to show you the difference. Our depth, just like before, is 0.5, enter. And then click your green check mark. Same process as before, same size triangle, same surface. So we're going to create one more sketch place it on the front of your box, and then choose the front from your navigation cube so you can look straight at what you're trying to create. I'm going to draw my triangle using lines. I'm going to estimate my triangle, getting it relatively close, but if it's not perfect, that's okay. Escape that line command. You want the base of your triangle to be horizontal. And you want all of your edges of your triangle to be equal, or all of your sides of your triangle to be equal. We want the base of our triangle to have a width of 0.5. You want it to be 0.5 from the left edge to the top corner. And then you want it to be 0.2 from the bottom edge of the triangle to the bottom edge of your rectangle. This is a location dimension. So for future reference, this 0.2 and this 0.5 are location dimensions. They locate the feature on the shape. And then this 0.5 is a size dimension, giving the triangle a specific size. You'll click the green check mark, go back to your isometric view again, so that whenever we extrude, you can see where things are going. We will click the extrude command, choose your triangle. We want to add it. And then the distance of that addition is going to be 0.5. So don't forget to change that. It will automatically make it one. So make sure you change it to 0.5 and then click your green check mark. Just like that. Just be mindful that if you change your direction, it may add it, but you won't really see a change in there. Um, so just be careful that you are going in the correct direction when you want to add something onto your shape. And then that will complete all four parts of the extrude tutorial. Bear in mind that whenever you are creating a project in the future, something of your own design, each of the parts will need to have their own individual file. So while we're making parts all in one document, all on the same planes and whatnot for our tutorials. This is a learning experience. And we will be putting each of these individual things in their own documents if we were going to use them um, for a project or if we were making components of glasses that we wanted to assemble together or any other real life applicable product. Just keep that in mind as we're learning the functions of Onshape and learning how to create things. And I will see you guys for our third tutorial.